Welcome to Welcome to w- 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 Welcome to the new cast hosted by Reva from New from New Life. Hi guys, welcome to the new cast. This is Reva Ochuba and I'm the cultural director of New Life, a social application that transfers cultural data into digital assets. Today we're going to talk about Gossip Girl. Gossip Girl is one of my favorite TV shows because it's honestly just one of the best TV shows of all time, like full stop, we're not, it's not really a conversation. Um, and the reason we're going to talk about Gossip Girl is when I was in grad school, I went to Central St. Martins and studied uh, fashion critical theory. There's a chapter in my final paper about Gossip Girl. There's also a chapter about Clueless, and I'm going to talk about that chapter in another episode. But Gossip Girl is extremely important because they did a collaboration with Second Life. And Second Life is this virtual community similar to Sims or like RuneScape where you could kind of like have this marketplace where you exchange cultural data for value. Not as, it, it's quite similar to New Life. It was very pre-Instagram. So um, I'm going to get right into it. The chapter is called um, Taste, Narrative, and Virtuality. So I was like thinking about this and I don't know, I was writing about Gossip Girl because it's obviously one of the like a pinnacle and like fashion history. It's like the style in Gossip Girl is like iconic and you can't really, you can't like, you can't fault it. Whoever was the costume designer or stylist was a genius, like very, very good. And when they did this collaboration with, with Second Life, they transported this like glamorous Upper East Side life onto this like virtual sphere, this virtual landscape. That was also the Upper East, Side, Upper East Side, New York, and you went to the Waldorf School. Was that the school they went to? Whichever school they went to. And they created a, a dichotomy, a, a, a spectrum, a sphere built around the cultural value of this already um, innate system known as the TV show Gossip Girl. So all the characters are there. Um, the style is the same. It's very like like late 2000s, like, you know, kind of indie, kind of preppy, lots of Phoenix you know, the indie band Phoenix, and basically, you know, Gossip Girl was th- this kind of like shade room, this kind of like like the social, cultural commentator, so- social spectator, gossip spiller, tea spiller. She was this type of person. So she was kind of like the all-knowing eye, kind of similar to the, the algorithm before the algorithm was really a thing. So she kind of knew where everyone was going, knew what everyone was doing, and was able to kind of create this this kind of like tension between um, those living in the universe and those reacting to the universe or wanting to be a part of it. She was able to create these kind of connections. Like, is Lonely Boy dating Serena Williams? Or is that her name? Serena Vanderwoodson, <laughs> not Serena Williams. Serena Vanderwoodson. Will Blair and Chuck get together? Like you were just constantly, it kind of reminded you of MySpace or like, early tabloid energy, but through the phone. So it was like this uh, indoctrination into gossip culture and social media culture and this like flurry of um, what is cool, what is now, what is present and what matters through the lens of fashion. And so um, I think the Gossip Girl did a really great job of introducing fantasy uh, through fashion and technology. Like Gossip Girl is, like I said before, extremely glamorous and over the top and, and quite Baroque or Rococo in, in their perspective, especially Blair Waldorf. She's very, she's very preppy, very wealthy, and is a bit of a snob, but doesn't really take, it, it, it isn't a chip on her shoulder, it's just the way, she, it's just the way she's bred, it's, it's, her, it's her breeding ground. So, um... Uh, there is a there, there's a theorist Michael Vanny Adam I think Vanoy Adam if I'm saying it correctly who talks about the fantasy principle, and I personally have always thought that technology's greatest letdown lies in the fact that it can only be as inventive as the person who creates it, um, the same way fashion can only be as innovative as the body will allow. So this is why uh, fantasy becomes extremely important. Yes, you can dress up these characters in these really ornate costumes and these really beautiful fabrics and, and Rodarte and, and Givenchy and, and really like uh, really illuminating figures of the fashion scene at this time, but the backdrop is extremely important to the fantasy. The backdrop, the vision, the ideal is extremely important. So the architecture, the interior design, the locations, the clientele, the atmosphere around, it. It, it, it uh, sucks you in and it's the sucking. It's not necessarily the people, it's the sucking, it's the atmosphere. It's the, it, it, the atmosphere is the virtual reality of it all. 
because they are taking something that is real, is feasible, is plausible, but, but pushing it into a higher stake, pushing it into a higher stake. And it's this, this higher stake becomes a conceptual narrative. And the conceptual narrative um, of taste, the, the conceptual narrative is uh, how virtual reality imbues a sense of like taste, right? So, um, so taking something that already exists and then p projecting it into like a into a stronger, more amplified ideal is what virtual reality does, and that gives you the the, the presence of fantasy. So you have these futuristic net narratives that are on their own quite limiting, and futuristic doesn't necessarily have to mean that doesn't have to mean that people are like living in spaceships and, and things like that. Like futuristic narratives are can simply mean something that is beyond the convention of now. It's beyond the readiness of today. And so, um, so with Gossip Girl, they're presenting this like worldly wealthy perspective in the center of New York. This worldly like. Uh, presentation of the center of New York, but it's very, very, mo it's very, the, the perspective is very monocultural because it's a, of a very succinct group of people. Um, and because it's a very narrow concept, it uh, moves away from potential. It isn't, it isn't steeped in reality at all. It pushes all the way far into the realm of possibility. Like, could life be this glamorous? Quite likely in this realm of fantasy, in this virtual reality. Right, so um, I, the the smaller something remains, the more niche something remains, the more particularized something is, the greater chance of the fantasy uh, taking hold. The more ideas and customs and traditions you allot to a particular focus, it falls out of grounds um, of utopia. In my mind. Now. Also in the chapter, I talked about mannequins as like one of the first virtual anthropomorphizations. <laughs> like, it's like turning a human into something, a, a projected ideal, once again. So when you go to a store, when you go to a store, let's say you go to Forever 21. Like I, when I was in high school, Forever 21 was it. I, rem I remember when Gwen Stefani sued Forever 21 for stealing all of the, for stealing lamb, this, you know her brand Lamb. She had like this brand Lamb, L A M B. Like Forever Twenty One stole a bunch of the designs, and I definitely bought a knockoff. <laughs> anyway, but mannequins are also these kind of like virtual objects because they propose to enchant you um, through the laws of possibility. Because a mannequin seems to be a perfect form, a perfect object. This the the mannequinized body is um, is perfect not perfectible it is already perfect and you as a human being a perfectible thing a, a, a perfectible uh, being has the chance of acclimating into a into something close to perfection but you will never be perfect you're like but a mannequin is seen as being made in god's image so it's always perfect so when visual merchandisers are dressing up mannequins they're trying to give you a, a sense of fantasy that if you look like this or behave like this or pose like this in this particular garment or raiment, then you are closer to God or closer to uh, the highest being of fantasy. And this is uh, why value can be so easily transferred through, through clothing, because clothing is a social technology on its own. And, and we play with clothing because we want to play with our identities, play with the way we are perceived and manage that perception, right? I think like, I dress the way I do because I'd like to be perceived a certain way and I like to feel a certain way and I want to manage feelings and manage perceptions like I think it's normal to want to do that it's just normal so um, as a social technology fashion evolves with the world's temperament like as fashion evolves as the world evolves and goes through ebbs and flows ups and downs so does the fashion industry I do think the way we dress so says a lot about the time we're in it says a lot about uh, whether we're at great highs or great lows in, in, in the in, in the universal disposition uh i speak a lot if you look at gossip girl it's very high fashion very high energy very well tailored very well constructed it, nothing about it is deconstructed it's it's very leveled up which tells of a time where budgets are possibly higher people allocated a greater um greater resources to these big budget projects and really tended to and cared for these uh these um culturally defined these defining series 
I, I think Gossip Girl is definitely a series that defines a particular moment in time. So, um, but then if you fast forward, I, I, I don't know if we could have a, a show like Gossip Girl today because I don't, things are so fragmented that it would be almost impossible to present such a niche reality or such a focal point of view um, without some kind of like backlash, right? I think Gossip Girl would be heavily berated upon for many things at this point, just like the way people talk about how sex in the city is kind of like problematic it, over time. I, I I don't know if I agree with that. I think you'd have to res respect the time they were in and, and acknowledge how things have changed, but it isn't always necessary to, to demean a fossil <laughs> like it's it's done it's it's already there it's nice to critique it though i think critique is extremely important and so is analyzation so going back to gossip girl um this game uh this game is really interesting because it like i said it idolized and, and emulated this glamorous social fear and when you came into the game you were fitted with a t-shirt and jeans you're fitted with a t-shirt and jeans plain white t-shirt plain jeans and you were made to wear this outfit and look around you and see how to assimilate into the cultural dialect of this particular environment like for me i moved to turkey from prague and the way i was dressing in prague doesn't necessarily work with the uh, Turkish Mediterranean silhouette. It's a little more flowy, a little, little more modest, a little more conserved, conservative, but conservative in a different way. I think from coming, I also live in London as well, lived in London as well. It's like this very tight, tailored, streamlined look. You wanna look very chic, but chic here has a different connotation. So I had to assimilate and kind of do a little bit of a workaround to see how I could uh, massage my own tendencies into this, this new silhouette. Okay. And um, so this, it's me coming here with like my ankle length black cinched at the waist uh, dress, um, kind of was like an introductory look for me and I had, and it was a very distinguishing medium. You can tell when someone is not from. Hey guys, so yesterday, like my phone stopped recording mid, uh, mid session. Um, so I'm gonna just pick up where I left off. I had to go to dinner so I couldn't really do it again. So I'm in my pajamas, but like, they're cute, so don't judge. But also judge, it's, you were entitled to judgment, but you know, expect consequences. <laughs> so, okay, so I was talking about, um, I was talking about Gossip Girl and like virtuality, right? Here we go. I was talking about Gossip Girl and virtuality and how, like, how conceptual narratives of taste uh, exist in these, in these kind of like alternative realms and how we go away from the, from the idea of potential into, into, and we're like thwarted into this realm of like ultimate possibility. Um, but in order for it to be a realm of ultimate possibility, it has to, into this like utopian design, it has to be kind of very niche and controlled because once you start adding external elements, you have this um, opposition that's likely to occur which does induce culture, does induce culture, induces friction, but could also uh, lead to a dissuasion from, from uh, notable ideals necessary for the contingency or, or the comportment, I would say, uh, of a desired outcome. And within the Gossip Girl portal, your, your face, a Gossip Girl portal via Second Life, you're faced with like just enough choices for new media, new identities, new concepts to exist, but in a controlled enough space that um, you're not receiving opposition from a force outside of this paradigm. So if this is a show, if this is a game about Gossip Girl, you're not gonna all automatically be in indoctrinated with information from like a secondary series like 90210, which is on at the same time, was on the same network. So it's, it's a very um, isolated sphere with the, the particular set of doctrines, ordinances, and interests, and that's maintained by this, uh, the designation of this particular paradigm. And uh, mannequins are really, really important because mannequins as fashion symbols are, are kind of a material for a way in, in, into virtual assessment. And what I mean by that is that they propose to enchant you with the, with, with the laws of possibility. So when you see something, a garment that you really like in a store window, well merchandised on this kind of perfected figure, you're, you're presented with the, with 
not necessarily assumption, but the ideation that you could possibly be this per you could you could as a human we are perfectible through garmentry, like we can dress in a way that flatters our figures and things like this, and you can um you can like embody desire or the desire that is being projected upon you through this mannequin image should you purchase this good or this or this idea and so when you purchase it, you're buying you're buying a, an identity you're buying an identity spectrum you're buying access to a certain privilege or or the hopeful access to to a certain set of exclusive interests that would hopefully align with your values and virtues and we do that through dress as like a social a social play like like th there is a ludic way we go about getting dressed that we hope to project onto others like if you want to look successful you dress for success right so we get to play with the perceptions that we'd like to have to our preferred audiences through dress and so in our own way we we our bodies are mannequins for an exterior interest so we dress ourselves up and this is a virtual reality we dress ourselves up to fit a niche concern or idea or objectation that will allow us to reach certain ends or or by certain means um, so there, there's a glamour here and, and the fantasy and the glamour is, is an addition to virtual uh, vicehood, right? Because we're all playing a game, like life is on a struggle, it's a game. And you know, how well you play it is all about how you manage perception. To a degree, you can get very far with a, with a well-managed perception of, of yourself, right? This is why reputation is so important, you know? Um, anyway, and so this, this idea I was talking about of like dressing for success, like you're dressing for the assimilation of, into a cultural dialect or into a cultural dialectic. For my example, like I moved to Turkey from Prague, from London, from you know some other places I've lived. And when I got to Turkey, oh, this, I had to kind of adjust my silhouette a little bit because the silhouette I was going for in London and Prague was a little more structured, I'd say a little more Eastern European oriented. I was going for this particular vibe. But as I came to Istanbul, Turkey specifically, or, Turkey, Istanbul specifically, I noticed the silhouette was a little more flowy. There was a little more indifference about tailoring. People here have more of a um, laissez-faire perspective on on, on uh, garmentry, lots of flowing skirts and things like this. And me being someone who was like, who's always been into like tightly fitted, tailored garments, I had to kind of dishevel myself a little bit to assimilate into the cultural dialectic here, uh, uh, instigated through dress style, through silhouette. And um, so back, going back to the Gossip Girl game, what's really interesting about the game is when you start playing it, you're indoctrinated or introduced to the game as a character wearing only a t-shirt and jeans. So your successful acclamation um, of clout, of garmentry, of, of, of acknowledgement is based upon how well you dress yourself with the options available. So within the game, you can buy like juicy couture, you can buy like cute skirts, you can buy these kind of like, um, these like status symbols, these like monikers of status and value. And so, um, so the way you dress becomes a statement of your reality. You're no longer a newcomer. You're no longer like an outlier. You've made it, right? You want to make it in the game. And so this is really interesting about fashion because fashion does grow, fashion does grow uh, more tied to transcendence and performance uh, as reality, ah, sorry, let me go back a little bit. Um, as your reality changes, so does the way you dress. It's very simple. I don't know why that was a very simple statement. I don't know why I wrote it so in such complex form here, <laughs> but like, um, or but it also translates to the world. Like as the world changes, so does our appreciation of clothing and how and how we dress. Which is I've I've said a lot about how sweatpants. If you wearing sweatpants. Uh, and that becomes an acceptable sartorial expression, then that says a lot about maybe our particular standards. Like we're not interested in, in presenting a tailored, uh, modified version of ourselves. We're, we're kind of leaning into this kind of complacent, these aesthetics of complacency, which, could, which, which I think is an, another discussion for, for a different day. So when you dress into the game and you start to assimilate, you start to acclimate and become one with the culture of the game and, and well accepted in the game, your reality is changing. Therefore, the way you dress continues to change. You know, people, when, once you achieve a point of success, then you kind of are able to tinker a little bit more with, with what you've learned because you have to like learn how to 
learn how a framework op operates before you can disrupt it. And that is what is being stated in the game here. So you start with your t-shirt and jeans, and then as the game goes on, you get to like play around a little bit with alternative options uh, and have a little more freedom uh, with the clout you've, you've achieved or, or the acknowledgement you've gained. So, um, <clears throat> But the thing about this game that's really interesting is that um, it does it, it is an aesthetic illusion. It's an aesthetic illusion because when you grow attached too attached to familiarity or a particular style of success or a well esteemed knowledge of techniques, then you kind of become bound to them. So you don't want to be bound to an aesthetic. You want to be able to grow and prosper within it and change as the world around it morphs as well. But within this concentrated ecosystem or ecosphere, you don't really have that option. So it presents the illusion of success or the illusion of successful, uh, of, of, of successful uh, comprehension of, of a set of ideas and subjects, but it isn't necessarily true on, on like a universal scale. And so it kind of becomes a bit stagnant because there are only so many options you can peruse or, or scale, which prevents them, from, which prevents the ideas from cycling out. Which is why the brand, the game didn't. It, it was only meant for a certain period of time. It's, it isn't. It hasn't com changed and cycled and changed and cycled the way like Sims has, right? The Sims are always moving along. They have like different options and opportunities available to the users and players and gamers associating with it. So it never feels uh, dated. Right, but when I watched the trailer for this for this New Life, second not New Life, sponsored by New Life, <laughs> for this like Second Life game, I was like, oh, this is clearly so 2008, 2009. It's just like in, it's like a time capsule. And but the Gossip Girl series itself was not a time capsule. Gossip Girl itself was able to cycle out through the entire series and mature and end on a, with 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 like uh, respect to. All that it had created it had like what six or seven seasons and then you saw the characters introduced you saw them go through different relationships and how their style evolved and changed and da da da, da and, mat and, and not matured but but reached a point of of I'd say like a plateau or aesthetic consensus toward the end and like the dialectical whatever dialectical exchanges were happening you saw them in real time and you saw them grow as you grew as a, as a person watching the show I was in high school and I and when it started and it did help me as a person think about personal style a lot differently um but it reached its full pinnacle and the same can be said with like sex in the city like even though sex in the city some people say it's problematic because it has a lot of overtones and a lot of uh controversial rhetorics underneath the uh underneath the surface of the con of the content or the script that was written it did serve a purpose and it was allowed to serve its full purpose. So we're able to look back at it as kind of this like cultural artifact, like this fossilized thing. And I don't know how necessary it is to consistently critique a fossil, but people like to do that. <laughs> um, um, so, uh, but the thing about virtual reality is that I want to talk about here is that virtual reality isn't always about a digital landscape that's being created. Virtual reality is about, is about idealistic representation. It's, it's augmented reality, and we can do that through clothing. We can augment our reality or allow people to see our realities much more different than they actually are. And fashion is one of the greatest vehicles for doing that. And then that's extended more, more away from the corporeal, from the temporal, into these uh, screened realms or these screened, screened portraits of our lives that, that we allow people to see into. So, Virtual reality, at the end of the day, is essentially just a radical actualization or a radical projection of the self. Like, if I could just show you what my best life could possibly be, maybe I could achieve or attain it. And that is what virtuality is supposed to imbue within uh, the person engaging in, in that style of social connection or social play. Um, and of course, fantasy is, is a theme when you're living in fantasy, there is no opposition, there is no hierarchy, there are no structures, and it's it's a code without inhibition, a code that you get to design on your own. But in the system that we're living in now, it's a little more inverted. It's like Instagram has its own fantasy for your life, and then you are playing that game, and you have to assimilate into that game, which is kind of fun. You do you can't be creative under certain constrictions. But then, as I said before, you can stagnate and tend to lose a sense of uh, exploratory, 
it's lose some of the exploratory elements necessary to to achieve uh, a true assemblage of self. Okay, well, hopefully that was helpful. <laughs> hopefully it wasn't too complicated, but I, I'm happy to answer questions. If you have any questions or topics you'd like me to explore in further episodes, let me know. Um, and I'll also copy a link to the chapter of that paper in the box below or comment description box below. Okay, I have to get ready for breakfast. I'm meeting a friend up the road for, for a cup of Turkish tea. Okay, well, Welcome, to, welcome, to, <laughs> welcome to the new cast, hosted by Reva from New Life.